Okay, so seizures, we're just going to look at really basic definitions. Anybody know somebody have a seizure disorder? <clears throat> Epilepsy type thing, yeah. So you, you may have already seen a, you know, a seizure, a, what they term, an old term, what they term as grand mal. It, you can tell people that don't really are familiar with it because they call it grandma seizures, you know. You see your grandma and you have a seizure, but... Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, uh, seizures are un one of these things that are almost an unknown. They're still learning about this. They keep changing the names and changing the incidents. And there's a gazillion different types of seizures that we're not going to be concerned with. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of treatment, different, different types of treatment for it, different types of things that take place. Anyway, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll take it's just a quick overview. Student the other day witnessed a seizure. Uh, she was about to feed a patient, help feed a patient, and the patient had a seizure. So it would have been very helpful if we had this class by then, but we didn't. So, anyway, she should be able to tell us all about it because she saw it very firsthand. So, <clears throat> when we look at the see, anybody can have a seizure, okay, at any time. They, they say that now it's really the cartoons now and the video games really promote that, that people having seizures with it, especially young people. But uh, <laughs> anyway, anybody, anytime can have a seizure. People with seizure disorders, it's not really that big of a deal for them if it stops. A normal seizure only lasts just a couple minutes and they stop and then they get up, clean up, and get, you know, go their way just their medicines, whatever they, they need to do. It's not really that big of a big of a deal for them. Now, somebody that's having a first-time seizure, that's a big deal. That's that's a hospital visit, okay? That's a CAT scan. And, uh, but history, not really that big a deal. Trauma, trauma-induced seizures are a big deal. Okay, that means there's been a, quite a bit of insult on the brain. <clears throat> And that is a big deal. Anyway, these neurons, these neurons fire at a certain rate. And uh, we won't really get into a lot of that, but the neurons fire at a different rate, causing coordinated muscle contraction and, and all this other. So there's a rate that's involved in it, essentially that, that these neural pathways form up and, and they have to, uh, cause co coordinated contraction, coordinated movement. Someone having a seizure or these convulsion type things, they, uh, they don't have coordinated movement. The way that I sort of picture this is, everybody watch Bugs Life, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I watched it more times than adults probably should. But the, uh, anyway, Bugs Life. Remember at the beginning of Bugs Life? All the ants are lined up and they're getting their, uh, their forced donation to hopper, the big grasshoppers, right? So they won't eat them. So they're all in this line, and they're carrying their their food for hopper in this line. And then you have little other ants outside there. They're trying to direct the ants, you know, make sure everybody stays in line. That's the normal. That's normal. The, these neurons are firing in line. Everything's normal. Then Flick does something. Right on top of the thing, try to ease up the work of the of what they're trying to do, and then the whole a leaf falls down, right? And then all the other ants they scatter, they go <clears throat> boom, they go all over the place, right? That's the seizure. All these neurons they start firing in all different directions at all different times, and then you get these. These, all these different muscle contractions, okay? So they still don't know why, why they fire like that? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They, they know some, they don't, they don't know others, okay? So all these neurons are firing and all these other things. Now, if you remember the movie, those little ants with the white hats, <clears throat> they're sitting over there going, it's okay, it's okay, it's only a leaf. Get back in line. Get back in line. It's okay. 
right? And so eventually the ants, they all get back in line and they, they start, they finish out what they're doing, right? Okay, that part there, getting those ants back in line would be the postictal stage. The, sort of the seizure's over now and now it's sort of a recovery resting stage and they're trying to get these ants back in line. Once they get back in line, then they finish their process, whatever they're doing. Okay, it, it's, it sort of goes along with it, okay? Uh, one thing about grand mal seizures or tonic, I, I call them tonic-clonic seizures and there's actually another name out there for them now, but tonic-clonic seizures, there's no dramatic, well in petty mal, there's no dramatic body movements. These are simple seizures we'll talk about in a minute, but also in these tonic-clonic seizures, there's no dramatic big, big movement of these. You see this person, they're flailing their arms and legs, and they're, they said, they said, oh no, they're having a seizure, you know, they're doing all this number here, right? Guess, guess what they're doing? They're faking it. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're, they're not having a tonic-clonic seizure. They're having some other type of dramatic type of seizure. <laughs> they need to watch more YouTube on people having real seizures and see what it looks like. Because a real seizure, the patient draws up and because it's muscle contraction, then, I mean, they still have this sort of weird sort of movement of the arms and legs and everything, but it's contracted because those, those muscles are receiving that uh, neural input at different times, so they're contracting at different motions. So it's more, con it's more of a drawn up con contraction like this. It's not flailing their arms. And if they're down there, they're flailing their arms and there's they're saying, oh, I'm having a seizure. <laughs> Guess what? Yeah. They're not having a seizure because people who have tonic-clonic seizures have no verbal communication or they can't respond to instant commands. So when I see someone, I'm like, ah, oh, they're, they're faking this. It's not a seizure because once you see a real one, you know what a fake one sort of looks like. And so what I normally do is, for the rookies anyway, uh, they're up there and they all have their eyes closed. You know, and they're they're flailing around. And I bend over. You know, when you sort of raise your voice just a little bit, it startles people, right? So, what? And so I I bend over and I go, "Are you having a seizure?" <laughs> and they <laughs> do that. Boom! Caught you. Now the really rookies will be flailing out. You going, yeah. <laughs> Get out. You're done. Yeah. So tonic clonic seizures, no verbal communication, no following of simple commands. And the other thing why would they be faking it? Uh a number of reasons. Yeah. We'll get into that. They they fake one big reason that for the medication. They want the drug. Okay? So they want the they want the drug. Uh, you give them a, a, the class of drug that you give for seizures is a benzodiazepine and a, or you might be more familiar with Valium. Y'all heard of Valium? Okay, so Valium, one good property of Valium, gets you really high. Okay. Huh? So can I have some? So a lot of these pain medications and these different things, they do that. So that's, these are the two types of seizures that we're pretty much going to focus on. The petty mal, these simple seizures, uh, they can communicate with you. And it might just be a shaking of a hand or, or doing this or in these last, where a tonic-clonic seizure might last, should only last just a couple minutes at the most. These may last hours. And they have a history of them, they know what they are, and they, they say, you know, I have simple seizures, petty mal seizures. They may have different other types of seizures, you know, but they can communicate with you, and uh, these would last for, for a long, long time. But, so, like, the second one, are those, okay, which ones are the ones that, like, only last for seconds? The generalized or the grand, grand mal. Okay. Right. All right. So, we'll break these down in a minute. So, one, one common cause 
A lot of common causes of drug, drug overdose can cause people to have seizures, alcohol toxicities, poisons, tumors, infection, pa uh, patients that get septic, diabetics can have seizures. We just talked about that trauma, bad, put bad behind there, stroke, heat stroke, epilepsy, they're just unknown. They don't know why they're having having the seizure. So, and that's a lot of times they just, they're just not sure exactly why. This will clear up a lot of misinformation about find my mouth. There we go. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Hello, ma'am. Welcome to Parkland Hospital. I will be your doctor today. What is your emergency? What? 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 Emergency? Yes. You are in the Parkland Emergency Department. What emergency can I help you with? Well, I just had a seizure. I may have another one any second now. Do you have a seizure history? Are you taking medicine for seizures? Do you have a seizure, doctor? <laughs> I just had a seizure. Wow, that was a bad one. I owe the pain of seizures. I have seizure pain. I have pain from the seizure. Ma'am, that was not a seizure. That was a dance move. I really don't think this is a seizure. My seizure medicine is Xanax, and I am out. Aren't you going to give me any Xanax? I take Xanax. No, because that wasn't a seizure, and Xanax is not a seizure medicine. You know, I was in a car accident four years ago. It was a bad car accident. I was on the way to help my grandmother who was dying of cancer. Now I have back pain and seizures. Ma'am, I'm not going to give you Xanax, because that wasn't a seizure, and Xanax is for anxiety. Tell me what is making you anxious. I am anxious that I may not get any Xanax. You know my doctor always gives it to me. The pills he gives me really helps the pain. Oh, I just had a seizure in my hand. My hand just twitches. I had hand coaching seizures. That was not a seizure either. Can I get another doctor? Can I get a doctor that will give me Valium? No. I have chest pain now. My chest hurts. Are you here for seizures or chest pain? The only thing that helps my pain is someone in the medicine that starts with Vic, Vico, Vicodin. No. Please tell me what you want. These are not seizures, and I'm not giving you Vicodin. I am getting a migraine. <laughs> Ma'am, you can take Advil for your headache, can't you? I am allergic to ibuprofen, aspirin, Ali, Toradol, Udrum, Zofrin, Raylan, fake leather, these things, Chinese food, non-narcotic, steroids, <laughs> Benadryl, Epinephrine, Wind, the Directionist, Tylenol, non-fat food, and employment. By the way, I have given you a fake address. Awesome. This has been great. Can I have medicine for my headache? It seems you are allergic to all medicines. Now I am really sick. I need the hurricane. I need it now. I also need a Sierra Mist to the meal tray. I have not eaten today, and I spent all my social security money on crack cocaine. Please, uh, ma'am, go home. Are you calling me a druggie? I am not paying this bill, and I want to talk to the CEO. Awesome. <laughs> It's real. <laughs> you see that patient, okay? <laughs> in the hospital, they come in, they're seeking drugs, they, they call out. and uh, Some people, you ask why, why people fake. Some people, I had a lady that was chronic with it. She'd get in an argument with her husband and she'd start having fake seizures. And I, I literally told her that she needed to stop dialing 911 for this and get help, psychological help, intervention. <laughs> And uh, or watch YouTube to learn how to take seizures better <laughs> because this is not happening. I'm not, we don't go into these type of games with that, but they do. They like the medicine, they like the pain medicine to come in, uh, but then they get tagged for being a, for being a, a, a drug seeker, you know, because the hospital records they show every time the patient's in the hospital, there's records of that and they show them why they're, why they're in the hospital, and then all of a sudden. Oh, they come in for medicine. Then they go to another hospital and, and do the same thing. They travel around different emergency rooms until they get tracked down there as, as well. 
But anyway, uh, back to normal functions upset by sun, the normal electrical function becomes very irregular and it start starting these uh, this chain event of the of the uh, muscle contraction and uh, release. Pe patients who have a history of seizures get an aura. I don't know why that doesn't start with an O, but an aura. So this patient that has a history of seizures, if, if I had a history of seizures, which I, I don't, okay, if I thought, oh, I get this aura, so I might get a, a taste or a sensation or a deja vu or something like that, and like, I'm about to have a seizure. This actually happened here on, on campus, okay? So the, uh, they would, not this part, but they would, if that was me, I would, oh, look at this mat. I would lay down on the mat, have my seizure. Okay. <laughs> it, uh, it may last just normal a couple of minutes, and then I get into a post-ictal state that we'll talk about in a minute, which is sort of a recovery state. I'm not all alert and oriented during that state, okay? And then, uh, then you re you recover from that. So uh, that that's sort of a normal thing. Uh, I would have to probably go home because of the fact that most most patients who have real seizures become incontinent with their bladder, so they urinate on themselves. The ones that are very experienced at faking for the medication will actually urinate on themselves, okay? But uh, you can tell, like I said, once you see a real one, you can tell because this patient now had this seizure and they're postictal. Uh, one, they have no sort of recollection of the seizure. So they had a seizure, and they you ask them, did you have a seizure? And they're like, well, you're, for an EMS-wise, they said, well, you're here, so I, I guess I may have, right? They don't have a recollection of that. And the other thing they, uh, you, so you have to get information from the people around, like the time, how long did the seizure last? What did they do? Did they communicate with you during the seizure? What, what, took, what, what took place there, okay? So these are the things that you do, and you just let them have the seizure, Way, way back in the day, they used to put a bot block in, and uh, it that just becomes an airway obstruction. I've heard of people trying to put spoons in their mouth and different things in the patient's mouth so they won't swallow their tongue. Well, we know you can't swallow your tongue, right? What's that bone it's connected by? Starts with an H. Hyphoid. Hyphoid? Yeah. Yeah. One of those. Goldie, right? It's not attached. Your tongue's attached by bone, so you're not going to swallow it. What happens is, in most cases, an un unconscious person, the tongue becomes splashed and falls over the epiglottis. That's the way they say, oh, it's blocking your airway, right? So that that uh, is very common there. That, but we put nothing in their mouth. And the other thing is, we don't hold them down. I I had down in the main hallway. I had to tell one teacher to get off another teacher because she was having the teacher had laid down on the couch, one of those benches out there. She was having a seizure, and the other teacher came up and laid on the top of her. Top of her. And I was walking down to the office, and I walked by, and I'm like, okay, I don't know if I should ask what you're doing, but it looks like the person underneath you is having a seizure. She goes, yeah, she's having a seizure. I'm, I'm helping her. I'm protecting her. I said, no. You're hurting her, get off. Get off of her. And uh, so she got off. We let the person have their seizure, then had a postictal state, she recovered. You will always have a postictal state. If that person does, if they have their seizure and they walk, they get up and they, ooh, that was a bad one. Not really. <laughs> you know? Uh, so don't hold them down. There's been a lot of documented cases where they held patients down. And the muscle contractions are so strong that it broke in their bones by holding them down. Let them seize, protect their airway, protect themselves. So if, if I was to have a seizure in between the desk here, that's not, right? You would, well, I know what you guys would do. You would like, oh, it's time to go. <laughs> but uh, you would move the desk away, help make sure 
uh, airways open and that you protect protect my airway, just hold my head lightly and uh, let me see this. Right, exactly, let me see this. And then it will, it will pass. Uh, afterwards, yes. <laughs> After they seize, turn them on your side, put them in that recovery uh, or that, you know, that lateral recumbent position in case they, they throw up. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad you mentioned that. So turn them on your side. Okay. Uh, and then after a time, we say a time because we don't really know. I've had pe patients postictal for 30 minutes, the whole transport. They they were looking at me and they you could tell they wanted to say something, but they couldn't say it because they were still sort of trying to get all the neurons back in order, right? Get get their stuff back together, you could say. But they do have this this aura, okay? And like I said, the to I call it tonic conic. That that is a little bit old, but the tonic phase is the rigid phase. So the patient's going to become very rigid, and then the clonic phase is where they jerk, they will shake or convulse for a, a couple minutes. Like I said, two minutes is really the a long seizure. Okay. One thing that we have to understand. That, that patient having a tonic clonic seizure is probably not breathing very well, if at all. Okay, so if this seizure goes into the more than the two or three minute category, then uh, if we have our toys around, we should probably start to look at that bag valve mask a little bit. Okay, uh, usually their teeth are clenched. I had a patient one time seize while I was intubating him. He overdosed on drugs and I was intubating him and he bit down on my laryngoscope, <clears throat> the metal blade, right? And I, he bit down so hard that I could pick him up by his torso. I was trying to get my blade out and I was shaking the blade. <laughs> I was trying to get my blade out. All right? So imagine what they do to these. <laughs> you put these in their mouth. <laughs> You know, come up with the missing digit there. I mean, they will bite down hard like a pit bull, you know, it's gone. Uh, so they may need uh, airway adjuncts to use, you know. Uh, we haven't talked a lot about nasal airways, right? The little, we spoke briefly about that, the nasal airway. You may insert a nasal airway to suction through and also to ventilate through, okay? And help open the airway somewhat. but. If, if it lasts longer, and there are cases where they do last quite a bit, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But then you enter this postictal phase, and then they stop, and it's sort of a slow period where they come around and they become alert, and I mean, slowly they become alert and oriented. Seizure patient, postictal. What is one of the things that I'm going to do with this patient here right away? I mean, it's going to be one of the first thing. I'm going to start an IV, yeah, and I'm going to do that. Right? These two, right? Because why? They have an ultra mental status. Yeah, it's, it's that simple. You have an ultra mental status, I'm doing a D-stick. Okay? So they have a D-stick, so I'm going to do a D-stick, see what their D-stick is, right? So, signs and symptoms, sudden loss of responsiveness, the, the stiffing, the, the, uh, the tonic phase, they may stop breathing, apnea, incontinence, bladder or bowel, okay, uh, usually bladder, they have the convulsions, and they don't have any memory of the event, really, okay, really confused about the event, but you're going to be able to see this patient, they're going to present diaphoretic, pale, really confused, like I said, incontinent, so, uh, and they just won't have a lot of understanding of what just, what just took place. So we want to protect their airway and uh, uh, let, them, let them see. Let's see what term used to describe the medical condition in which too many brain cells become excited simultaneously. 
there are so many kinds of seizures that neurologists are still updating how to classify them. Usually they classify seizures into two main types, partial seizures and primarily generalized seizures. The difference between these types is in how they begin. Primarily generalized seizures begin with a widespread electrical discharge that involves both sides of the brain at once. On the other hand, partial seizures begin with an electrical discharge in one limited area of the brain. All generalized seizures begin with synchronous electrical activity throughout the brain, accompanied by sudden generalized movements or loss of consciousness. However, there are still many different types of generalized seizures. A tonic-clonic seizure, once called a grand mal, is what most people think of when they hear the word seizure. When someone experiences a tonic-clonic seizure, first they stiffen and lose consciousness, which is the tonic phase, then they begin jerking, and this lasts for several minutes, called the clonic phase. Sometimes seizures don't have a tonic stiffening and a clonic jerking sequence, but are just tonic seizures or clonic seizures. Other types of generalized seizures include absence seizures, where the sufferer disconnects from the world for a few seconds, and myoclonic seizures, which cause jerking, for just for a second or two. Partial seizures, which begin in a single part of the brain, are further described by two important additional criteria. The first is whether awareness, memory, and consciousness are preserved during the seizure. If they all are preserved, then a seizure is called simple partial. However, if any are impaired, then the seizure is called complex partial. The impact of a partial seizure depends on where in the brain it originates and how it spreads. Partial seizures sometimes have an aura, which is a warning that bigger seizures may follow. An aura usually occurs seconds to minutes before a seizure, but some patients can have periods of warning lasting a day or longer. There are many different ways in which people experience an aura. The start of a seizure in one of the temporal lobes can produce unusual feelings, abnormal sensations, or forced thinking. The onset of a complex partial seizure may be heralded by deja vu, a familiar feeling, or jamais vu, an unfamiliar feeling. Some patients have auras of sounds, tastes, distorted vision, racing thoughts, or smells like burning rubber. Physical sensations that can occur as auras include dizziness, headache, lightheadedness, and numbness. An upset stomach is a particularly common physical symptom. Auras can include a sense of tingling, rising up the body, or other strange feelings that are difficult to describe. Distorted emotions like fear or panic can also be a seizure warning. However, some complex partial seizures occur without any remembered warning. Understanding the different types of seizures can be helpful, but many people want more detailed information. The next two videos in this series provide an in-depth look at the effect of partial seizures on different parts of the brain and the different types of generalized seizures. If you or anyone you know may have seizures, please make sure that they see a physician. The movies in this And. No worry, I'm not watching the other two. They're not the same, but they just go into some uh, different definitions of them. Okay, so this you don't have any notes, but don't write it down. I, I just didn't copy them. I'm going to copy this down. I'll give it to you next time. Okay, these slides up here. Because it just gives you the new definition. So the tonic clonic seizure. Now, you can have a tonic seizure and a clonic seizure. Okay, so they can develop those two. They can just get real stiff and have that type of seizure they can just have the jerking but most of them are tonic clonic all right but now they're called the new name general generalized onset motor seizure is the general the new name for it like i said i, I i'm gonna uh, copy this for you in there okay and they're not aware and they're not aware of this so that old tonic clonic seizure they're they're not aware of that so that's one one way that you know that they're not they're not seeking or they're not seizing I've seen people fake seizures just for the fact that they want attention and oh, all sorts of, all sorts of 
with those. Okay, because we saw the video on, on the way that sort of looked, right? So if you have someone that's f flailing like a fish out of water, you take a little goldfish and throw them on the ground and they're flopping back and forth, and you know, they're, and, and you see that, then it's like, hey, come on, really? You know, but uh, so that's a new definition of one. Like I said, the, uh, they get these different types of state in it, loss of consciousness, the tonic phase, they get the muscle rigidity, and then they, they start to convulse, and then this postictal state where they sort of recover somewhat. And then you have absent seizures, okay? They might just be staring like often to the, to the, I don't know, often to the space. So this, this patient here, with these absent seizures, okay, maybe if, if I if, if I had absent seizures, I could be all of a sudden going. <laughs> maybe I'm having absent seizures. <laughs> but uh, then you just, then what happens though, that, that person, what's creepy is they will pick up where they left off. We've had people with absent seizures, we'll walk them over and they'll sit down and they're still sort of dead. And like 10 minutes later, they they pick up where they left off when they were talking, but it's been 10 minutes and they're sort of looking around going, I was up there before. <laughs> you know? uh, they're short. It's, you know, minutes, but they're not, they're not that long. Myoclonic seizures, sort of like, you, you sort of get a jerk motion, you know, like a twitch, you know, like like that. Tonic seizures, where we, we talked about that, the, this, just the stiffening. Atonic seizures, where there are called drop seizures, okay? Uh, this is where the patient may be sitting in the chair and falls over. I mean, uh, it'd be like sitting down. If I had drop seizures, I could be sitting here and all of a sudden just there and drop, right? <laughs> We might be holding something and just twitch and, and drop. That's why they call drop seizures. Okay, and they don't last very long at all. all right? And then the very common in infants is uh, in small children febrile seizures. Right? Temperature, body temperature goes up too much and they seize. They cool them down. <laughs> They're too hot. Cool them off. We'll, we will talk about that. Febrile seizures. Uh, it's when you when I say cool off, that doesn't mean pouring cold water on them. Uh, most babies over they overdress them anyway, so get them off, start to cool them down. You know, moms, especially new moms, like to bundle them up, and then you know they already have a fever and they're bundled. They're putting these one one things on them, made of flannel, and then all these blankets. We got to keep them cool. Where well, they have a hundred and two temperature now, you jacked it up to 105 and so they're seizing from that okay so they need they need you need to un, undress them and get them in some area that's cooler right, to cool them down same deal let them seize protect their airway okay it, it, it will stop so those are just some definitions motor seizures all right uh, it was stiff weak very temporary uh, and motor like it said is a uh, the older term is a grand mal seizure. All right, sensory seizures where they they have a scent. You know, something causes them to have, you know, the the, uh, the smell of something perhaps. Right? Autonomic. Uh, who knows, right? Uh, abdominal discomfort, nausea, uh, stomach pain. Something in there causes this. Uh, to take place and then psychogenic seizures where it's an emotional change fear or something which causes the seizure uh, a psychological change which would cause the seizure the only two that I really want you guys to be responsible for are the simple seizures uh, the ones that you know they may they may have a twitch or they may move the hands okay uh, or, or stare, stare off into space or something like that and then the tonic clonic or what's the new term? General motorized? General motorized seizures, okay. So motor seizures, okay. Those are the ones, I'm, I'm still don't call them tonic clonic seizures, okay, because I'm old and I hate change. 
but the uh, so tonic conic seizures okay those are the really the only two that I want you to be to be familiar with uh, there is we talked about status asthmaticus right when we talked about asthma we talked no okay so let's 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 bring that up for sure status asthmaticus is like status epilepticus it's Status asthmaticus is a patient having one asthma attack after another one with very little or no rest in between, okay? Status epilepticus is a patient having seizures, one seizure after another with little or no post time in between. So they're having multiple seizures with no rest. Remember, you're not really breathing, the patient's not really breathing that well during this seizure, okay? So, someone in status epilepticus or status, would you, you would need airway function, suctioning, bag valve mass, okay? You would need to oxygenate this patient. Uh, they're, they're not going to be breathing very well. And this is life-threatening if you don't stop the seizures, okay? Uh, Advanced life support, what they do with the tonic clonic seizures to start an IV, they give them a benzodiazepine, like a Valium, or more common now, they give them a drug called Versed, which is a, a nice drug, okay? Uh, and it will stop the outward seizures, it will stop the mus muscular activity, but the patient still could be seizing inside, you just don't, you just won't see it, okay? Usually you can tell, because they'll be tachycardic, their heart rate's going to go up. Their heart rate's going to go up. When you do any sort of treatment, you know, like if the patient having respiratory problems, okay, and you're treating those respiratory problems and it's and it's effective, that your treatment's working, then the respiratory rate is going to go down, right? If the respiratory rate goes down, their heart rate is going to go down. If you're treating that patient and it's not, they have a increased respiration rate respiratory rate or increased heart rate in your treatment you're giving treatment it's and if it's not working then you won't see any change in that you won't see any change in the respiratory and uh, the heart rate remember rate we talked about rate rhythm pressure rate that heart rate tells you a lot about what's taking place pain the patient could be completely unconscious at Glasgow at three right totally out of it, no response, and they're, they can still be in pain, their heart races, okay? Uh, and you'll know that by heart rate, that that patient's still in pain. They, they say that the patient has no pain during the seizures, I don't know exactly how they come up with that, but they say that they're not really, they don't really feel pain, okay? But this status epileptic is, is, is life-threatening, and uh, last, uh, one after another. I could swear we talked about that. Maybe there's other clients because there's a there's a new drug out, Status Dramaticus. <laughs> Have y'all heard of Status Dramaticus? No. One drama <laughs> after another one. <laughs> I laugh for five minutes. <laughs> 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 it sounds like a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> oh, but the uh, epilepticus, dramaticus, you get it now? <laughs> it's funnier when you don't have to explain it. <laughs> 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 wow, that was so good. <laughs> I got it when I saw it, and I laughed like for five minutes. They had a little picture of an IV port, and they were about to give them the drug for status uh, dramaticus. And uh, I, I laughed. I, I looked at that and I'm like, that's funny. I laughed a little bit. Then went on, did something else, and came back to it. And like, that's still funny. I'm still laughing <laughs> about it. All right. So look around. Get as much information as you can. Loosen the restrictive clothing. Don't restrain the patient. Okay. Like you, like you were saying after the seizure. Place them in a recovery position for the possibility of vomiting. All right. 
と笑ってきてるね。Uh, protect the airway. Make sure that they have an open patency. Oh, this is protect the private patient. Man, how did, I, how did I get Peyton out of that? Well, by the way, you do need to make sure that the patient's airway is Peyton open. Well, maybe I'm about to have a little seizure. Okay. Uh, they do, you do, and, uh, and anything you want to protect, you want to have patient privacy. That's why they had the curtain in the hospital, right? Shut the curtain, shut the door, right? Anyway, but do keep their airway open, right? Let them seize. And then, uh, a, remember what, what you're going to see, hospital based, is that uh, the patient's going to seize. They'll put those seizure pads on the bed, you know, uh, in case they seize, they're going to protect the patient. Okay, so they put pad, padding there, and then uh, they're starting IV, and because the, the medicine that they give is intravenous, they're giving them benzodiazepine of some sort, probably Versed, uh, in which will typically stop the seizure. Uh, and then they'll draw labs, they'll check their, their different blood levels for uh, You know, like at their own seizure medication, they may check their dilatin levels, okay? And so they'll check those labs to see that. Uh, probably send them over to CT for a CAT scan. If they have a history of seizures, then they'll start an IV, stop the seizure, draw some labs, you know, maybe adjust their medication. They may not do the CAT scan, but uh, typically they'll do the CAT scan and then refer the patient to a neurologist for the, for the seizures if, if they already don't have a neurologist, okay? And then they can go in and do, do different tests, the EEGs, right? Have you got, anybody seen those yet? Oh, yeah. Long boring tests, they just stand there for a long time. Oh, yeah, put it on your head. So they'll do the EEG to look at brain activity and see if they're seizing. Uh, and just other neurological tests. They will actually, in the, uh, in the doctor's office, uh, sort of like on the heart, when they take a stress test, they will try to provoke a seizure. So they'll sit the patient in the chair and have like a strobe light in front of them and try to provoke a seizure. And then that way, and with everything connected, and then that's the way they can see what area of the brain is affected by, yeah. And so, but they're they're highly complex, and they're they're still learning uh, about it. You know, back back in the ancient days, they just thought you were possessed. <laughs> yeah, they thought you had a demon inside of you if you were if you had seizures. They would kick you out of the city, and you go you go. I don't know what you're doing, but you go away. <laughs> yeah, they don't they they just. They, They just thought they, they had a demon inside. Isn't that glad we got out of that part of medicine? You know, but uh, questions there? Anyway, I, what you need, just the terminology and everything for right now, because if that, in case you're like that one person yesterday that actually witnessed it, you would know what's taking place. Okay. Oh.